Yo, what is going on guys? SCJ here, back with another video, and today we're going to be talking about the man who looks like the biggest steal of the 2020 NBA free agency, at least in terms of contract size, or I guess, notoriety. The guy I'm talking about would be none other than Nicholas Batum. That might be the best fit for me, especially for that team. Not especially for me, but for that team, because they don't have a guy who just, just, wants, just wants to make the other guys better. I don't really care about what I'm doing, actually. I just want to be sure like the other guys are in a good position to be successful. I mean, I've been that way my whole career, you know. That is the way I see the game and I play the game for myself, so. The history and story with Nick Batum and why or how he began to get looked at or looked at so negatively or how he became such a steal is simple yet kind of complicated. Batum got traded from the Portland Trail Blazers to the Charlotte Hornets after seven seasons with the Blazers on June 24, 2015, just a day prior to the 2015 NBA draft. Batum had a rough first game with the Hornets to begin the 2015-16 season when the Hornets headed a little further down south to Miami to take on the Heat. Batum only shot 3 for 12 from the field and he finished with 9 points, 6 rebounds and 3 assists. Batum would pick things up quickly though as he would end up averaging 18.7 points, 6.6 .6 rebounds, 3.9 assists and 1.2 steals over the course of the next 9 games and in just his 10th game as a Hornet, Batum had one of the best games during his entire Hornets tenure and he also had his season high in scoring for that season as he dropped 33 points that night. Batum would finish the season strong as he averaged nearly 15 points coming in at 14.9 per game on the season, as well as 6.1 rebounds, 5.8 assists, and nearly one steal a game with 0.9. After undoubtedly the best season of his career, the Hornets would of course be interested in re-signing Batum. During that same free agency though, the NBA had a massive salary cap spike and teams started to go crazy and overpace players such as the Bucks giving $38 million to Matthew Delvadova that offseason for example. The Hornets were one of the many teams that overpaid a free agent after gaining all that new money to spend and the Hornets would give Batum a massive $120 million contract that lasted 5 seasons. After receiving that massive $120 million contract, Batum would once again have a career year as he averaged career highs in nearly every statistical category. During the 16-17 season, Batum averaged 15.1 points, 6.2 rebounds, 5.9 assists, and 1.1 steals. Following the two straight career years to start his tenure in Charlotte though, things began to take a turn for both Batum and the Hornets. Batum's numbers began to decline drastically after he began to deal with elbow injuries starting on October 5th, 2017, when he was ruled out for six to eight weeks with a tear to the ulnar collateral ligament in his elbow. Batum would return on November 15, 2017 and score 16 points in 32 minutes, but then a week later, Batum would deal with an elbow contusion and he began to deal with elbow and finger injuries from that point onward. So you had a player who had just given the Hornets career years in two straight seasons, now dealing with injuries which lowered his stats and was also on a huge $120 million contract. When looking at his stats here, you can see the exact numbers on how much his averages dropped over the course of just three seasons. But after averaging career lows in nearly every category last season, it seems like Batum is really thriving in his new role as a member of the Los Angeles Clippers. Batum has played solid in his first two games and has had a significant part in the Clippers' success. On opening night against the Lakers, Batum didn't shoot too great, but he only attempted four shots, which resulted in just three points. But he affected the game everywhere else as he grabbed six rebounds and dished out six assists, as well as affecting the game with his defense as he grabbed two steals. In his second game against the Nuggets on Christmas Day, Batum played very, very well. He had 13 points on five for eight shooting, 10 rebounds, four assists, one steal, and one block. Those are very solid numbers, especially for a guy who it seems like was forgotten about and counted out and no one wanted to sign. So essentially, the reason no one wanted to go for Batum in a salary dump trade, even if they received good compensation along with him, was because of just how big or bloated his contract was, and in terms of free agency once he was waived by the Hornets, it was because of how he dealt with injuries once again during the 2019-20 season, only managed to play 22 games, and averaged some of the worst numbers of his career in what was definitely the worst season of his career. But I think many people forgot he only played 23 minutes a game last season, and while he didn't play well, there's actually more that goes into it. 
Personally, I thought the Nets would have been the perfect place for Batum, and they could have started him at small forward instead of Joe Harris. But most fans and or teams didn't even bother with him and thought that he wasn't worth signing. But people just didn't realize that it wasn't that he was bad. He just got overpaid and was asked to do too much on a bad team. This man is a nice fourth or fifth option on any team, and especially a contender. Again, you have to remember Batum is just the fourth or fifth option, and most likely the fifth option, honestly, on this Clippers team. So even if you don't think his numbers are good, which I think they actually are very solid, especially for a guy who nobody wanted and had a rough last few years, especially last season, and a guy who's a fifth option. You gotta remember, out of all the fifth options in the league this season, Batum's numbers are definitely the best out of any of them. Oftentimes, a change of scenery really can do the trick for a player. Even with this being the third lowest number of field goals he's attempted per game in his career, and also the fact he struggled offensively and only attempted four shots in opening night, Batum is still playing well and putting up decent numbers during the first couple of games of this season. If you look at his numbers for his career, Batum has always been a player to affect the game in a bunch of different ways and can be a vital cog in any team's success. While Paul George's great play so far has been the biggest reason for the Clippers' success, you can't discount or take away the importance that Batum's role has played in the Clippers' success and in the two very good wins they've got so far. So yeah guys, just wanted to get a quick video out talking about Batum and everything, but let me know down below what you thought about Nick Batum in the offseason and how you felt so far during this early portion of his tenure with the Clippers down below in the comment section. If you guys like the video though, then make sure to give it a like as it helps out a lot. And if you're new to the channel and or you want to see more NBA content or breakdowns like this video or any of my other ones, then make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. That way you stay up to date with all my videos. Anyway though guys, I'm SCJ and I am out. Peace.